That'd be something quite. Yeah, green, green, and blush. Yeah. That'd be fascinating. Yeah. How long does it take to reach the moon? Uh, it's quite quick. Amid thorn trees and dust, Alexander McCall Smith is back in the place he once called home. Botswana is a very attractive country. It has a dry landscape. Uh, it's an extraordinary place in, in a physical sense. It's a sort of landscape that I suspect uh, people who were familiar with parts of northern Queensland, for example, would, would, would appreciate and understand. At the edge of the Kalahari Desert, Professor McCall Smith goes hunting, not for big game, but for adventures to fill his next novel. Come here and find 10, 15 of them out, just sort of stretched out. Some of them are quite Getting the sun there. Just getting a bit of sun. It's a remarkable country in so many respects, and I rather admired many of the people whom I'd met in Botswana. Is that okay? Yeah, I think that should be. Take it from me, you look lovely. Is that all right? Is that, is that the right way around? I yes, wouldn't want to wear this backwards. Yes, it is. A somewhat formal academic with a passion for writing, he was born in Zimbabwe when it was a British colony called Rhodesia. In the 1980s, he came back to Africa to establish a law school. <laughs> this looks like uh, uh, video harassment. <laughs> <laughs> Which section of the penal code is that? It was on a visit like this some years ago that he invented the character of a polite, virtuous and solidly built African woman called Precious Ramotsawe, founder of the number one ladies detective agency. <laughs> Professor McCall Smith's books about this unlikely heroine have now sold millions of copies around the world. Mara Motswe did not want Africa to change. She did not want her people to become like everybody else, soulless, selfish, forgetful of what it means to be an African, or worse still, ashamed of Africa. She could not be anything but an African, never, even if somebody came up to her and said, here's a pill, the very latest thing. Take it and it will make you into an American. She would say, no, never, no thank you. Botswana is one of Africa's few success stories. After independence from Britain in 1966, some of the world's richest diamond mines were discovered here. It's given Botswana's population of nearly two million one of the highest standards of living on the African continent. And then I'll be very happy to, uh, to sign books and uh, to deal with any complaints uh, that people have. Uh, or now the prolific professor is writing his seventh novel in the series. A TV deal and possibly a film are on their way. He hasn't looked back. This one is uh, for Nalina. Nalina, right. 56-year-old Alexander McCall Smith, or Sandy as he's known, had written more than 40 books before his quaint Africa novels set the literary world alight three years ago. Miriam and Tom. It's not the typical perception of Africa, but writing about Botswana was different because it was tied up with feelings of guilt. <laughs> I was born into the tail end of the colonial period. Uh, I think the, the West in general took a great deal from, from Africa, uh, exploited it. But I do think that um, uh, those who, who were brought up in, in colonial days in, in, in Africa um, obviously have, have some sort of uh, obligation to the, to the place. So I'm trying to, to do as much as I can uh, personally uh, to address that. It's the Scottish capital Edinburgh that Alexander McCall Smith now describes as home. And while this is a world away from Botswana, here too he continues to create the characters that somehow defy the bleakness often associated with modern day life, be it in Africa or Scotland.
And a very warm welcome uh, to Alexander McCall Smith, who uh, agreed to write a wonderful little script for us. Sandy McCall Smith's reputation and repertoire expands by the day. Right, well, here's a story about a king and a fanfare. One of his latest commissions was to write a story to accompany the Scottish Chamber Orchestra, conducted by Australian Alex Bryger. Apart from the runaway success of his Botswana novels, he's just published a new series of fiction based on a real, upmarket Edinburgh address appropriately named 44 Scotland Street. <laughs> there you go, do you want to hold that there? The tourist friendly face of Scotland isn't usually how the Scots see themselves. In fact, most Scottish authors have painted their land as grey and dour. Some have even coined the genre miserabilism. That is from Isla, which is an entirely separate kind of world of whiskies of its own. Mm -hmm. The one you have, you'll find, is, is very, very smoky, very, very peaty. Jane, let me see that. <laughs> that's the ones I like. Oh, my goodness hits, me, that's, that's medicinal. Hits you over the Doesn't head. it? That's what that I smells like, like the one that hits you over disinfectant. The head. Oh. <coughs> How better to explain Scotland's obsession with this grimness than over a glass of aged whisky at a centuries-old malt whisky club? Joining us is one of the country's top crime writers, Ian Rankin. Well, I've always been attracted to the darker side of life anyway. Um, and I mean, I, I started writing about Edinburgh to make sense of Edinburgh when I arrived here as a student and immediately, because I was studying literature, got involved in the worlds of Miss Jean Brodie, who is a descendant of Deacon Brodie, who was a template for Jekyll and Hyde. So I became fascinated by the idea of Edinburgh as a Jekyll and Hyde city. And I think, you know, if you want to make a, a simple uh, algebraic equation of it, you would say that I write about the, um, the Hyde and Sandy desperately tries to write about the Jekyll, or the Jekyll, as we should say, being good Scots. Um, and, and these two cities do exist. There's a nice cat over there. It's always a good sign when you see cats prowling around the street. That suggests that it's a good place to live. Really? Oh yes, they can tell. As in his writings about Africa, Professor McCall Smith recreates optimism through his characters yes. and their dramas. Well, will you I I've read the book. You we, oh, well, thanks very much it's indeed. It's funny. It's uh, yeah. so much humour. And... What sets you know? Scotland Street you know? apart you know? is that he wrote it as a serialised novel published daily in a newspaper. He's determined to make his mark through creating hopefulness. Most people who come and visit Scotland will will tend to see that. They'll tend to see the the positive and the and the beautiful and the attractive, rather than the uh, the grim. The grim is there, but uh, the grim there's grim in any country. Everybody has their their grim side. Everybody has a negative side, but it's not the it shouldn't be necessarily the dominant one. In the African townships, not everyone would agree. Professor McCall Smith refers to it as the disease which is stalking through Africa. But in the ghettos around Botswana's capital, Gaborone, they call it AIDS. Here, adults don't expect to survive past the age of 40. It's afflicted nearly one-third of the population. Botswana might be, in many people's eyes, a rich country, but there's great differences between the rich at the top and the poor at the bottom. And in some of these villages, there's, there is malnutrition and there is poverty. Well, I couldn't tell you who's an AIDS orphan or who's the result of a wandering father who's disappeared, leaving a mother with six kids and the mother's died. 
at an orphanage run by the international charity SOS and written about in Professor McCall Smith's novels, one in five children has full-blown AIDS. Yet he maintains drawing too much attention to HIV AIDS detracts from his upbeat overall message. Uh, there's so much written about it and there's so many people looking at that issue in, in a very uh, hard-nosed and clear way that uh, I would not have anything in particular to add to what has already said. But I did feel more um, that it was important to maintain the positive uh, side of these uh, these books, not to make them into tragedies. Director Derek James points out HIV AIDS is hardly the only sad story in these children's short lives. I've just got a child who's won a scholarship to a posh private school and started life in a pit latrine. She was found by a policeman in a pit latrine. So obviously some young girl had abandoned the child. She didn't realize this child's got brains. He believes Sandy McCall Smith's books attract the right kind of attention to Africa. This, this group this is, is the toddler's interest. group. Yeah. This little boy here uh, is Teo. Yeah. The author used some of the stories of the children here after Derek James showed him around four or five years ago. Oh, definitely. Sandy owes me big. He owes our SOS big because the two first books, the number one ladies detective agency and I think the Tears of the Giraffe, were both based on this village and his main female character was based on my previous matron here. Uh, so Sandy, in a sense, got a lot of his ideas here but he's put it over in such a gentle way during time of Iraq wars. I think people just want to read something very different. These dens all interlink yeah. with each other. It's extraordinary. It's such a big area as well, all the way over there. For his next instalment, Professor McCall Smith takes to the bush to find a new adventure for his lady detective character, Precious Ramotsawe. Look at the duck people. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes. He's joined by the operations manager of the Mokolodi Nature Reserve, Neil Whitson, who's worked with Botswana's people and wildlife for more than a decade. The reserve has the country's only station for the treatment of cheetahs. These two are as tame as cheetahs can get, but still present a risk. Never approach them uh, fast and, and, and uh, you know, you never know if they're grumpy today or yes. whether they're not willing to be sociable. If Sandy McCall Smith has his way, these cheetahs may soon find themselves in a future episode. Yeah, we that's a nice cheetah there. Now, being a wild animal, a tame wild animal, you, you know, one has to always be vigilant and, yeah. and then just appreciate the beauty of, yes. of looking at one of the fastest uh, lands. Yes, it is. Thank you very much indeed. That's lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Across town, Professor McCall Smith has a final task before leaving. By the 2005 Alexander McCall Smith and British Council short story competition, and this one goes to the story entitled Who Do You Tell? He set up a literary prize to encourage writers in the art of the short story. If you take this to the bank, they will say, this check is too big. And uh, they will send you away. So what we have here is one that works. This is the one that works, and this is the check that doesn't work. But this is the check that you might like to remember and keep as a, as a memento for. Congratulations. That was a, a very, very fine story. It was beautifully written. And I'm delighted to be able to present you with the, the, for the first prize in, in the competition. Well done. Each time he departs, he hopes to leave behind something positive. He wrote that there was so much suffering in Africa, it's tempting just to shrug your shoulders and walk away. 
But you can't do that, he says. You just can't.